Hallelujah. How many can say the Lord's good? How many believe what you say makes a difference? Okay, four people. Hallelujah. Let me put you like this. Everything you believe right now is based upon words you've heard. And most of your life and the conditions and the circumstances of your life are based upon words that you say. So if you want to change your life, change your words. Change the words you hear and change your words you speak. Amen. Words are powerful, powerful uh, tools in our life. We're the only creature on planet earth created in the image of God with the power of words, of speech. And when God speaks, he creates things. And you're created in the image of God. And your words are a creative force. And when we begin to believe things and say things, then it's amazing how our life lines up with the words that come out of our mouth. I want you to say this with me. I have the mind of Christ. I, have the mind of Christ. I hold the thoughts and feelings, the thoughts and, feelings. And, purposes and purposes of His heart in my heart. In my heart. I, am I am a believer, not a doubter. Not a doubter. I hold fast. To my confession of faith. I decide to walk by faith. And practice faith. My faith comes by hearing. And my hearing from the word of God. Jesus is the author. And developer. Of my faith. I am. A world overcomer. Because I'm born of God. I represent the Father in Jesus well. I'm a useful member of the body of Christ. I am His workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus. My Father is all the while working effectively in me. Both to will and to do His good pleasure. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now just learn to talk like that all the time. Amen. Learn to speak the Word of God and declare the Word of God over your life all the time. I have several confessions written out in my Bible. Get them. Go on the internet. Print something out. Use technology for a positive influence in your life. Amen. Do something. Watch negative videos. Hallelujah. Amen. Do anything but watch the view. Amen. That's just ignorance gone to seed. Amen. Man, those are some stupid women. That, that, that's the nicest thing I can say right there about that. Amen. I better get back to my message. Praise the Lord. Open your Bibles up to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. This morning, I encourage you to hold up and keep the family members in Florida, the tragedy of 17 young people lost, praying that our nation gets off as of stupid and understand that our schools do not need to be gun-free zones. We don't know our schools do not need to be safe targets. All the money we spend on foolishness, we could afford to have protective care on every one of our campuses where our children are. How many would agree? Amen. So... Uh, with that. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 this morning I want to just take a few moments and uh, so I preached really fast in first service we're way past where we were then so you'll probably have to get this and play it backwards to understand everything I'm about to say. (laughs) Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 therefore since a promise remains of entering his rest let us fear lest any of you seem to come short of it For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Father, I thank you this morning that faith comes alive in the hearts and lives of your people. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Look at the cover of your outline. The challenge we all face is how do we get what is in the book into our hearts? When you read the Word of God, how do you get it off the page and into your heart? And then, how do we get it to flow out of our hearts 
with life-giving reality. How does the Word of God become a living reality in and through our life? You see, the Word of God comes to us and declares the magnificent benevolence of God and His grace in our lives. It reveals His mercy and the covering of our shame and the forgiveness for the failures in our lives. Then it boldly proclaims a life to us in Christ that can seem to be beyond the scope of reality. Sometimes you read the Word of God and the promises and think, you know, that, that's just a little too far out there. I don't know. So what we do and what we've done, man has done through Christianity and church history down through the earth. Anything that seemed too far to reach in his own strength, he just spiritualized it away. Came up with a good religious excuse of why certain things aren't for today. And, and that's just self-crippling, uh, and we don't want to go there. Could you say amen? amen? You see, we're called to believe before we understand. You are called to be a believer, not an understander. You're called to believe, not understand. Believe. Believe. That, Paul just said to Philippian jailer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll be saved. Well, I don't understand. Like I, I tell you about witnessing to my Jehovah Witnesses friends when they come by. I think I scared them. They haven't been by for quite a while. But the, they just wave now. They don't ever come over. Any, <laughs> that guy takes your Bible and won't give it back for two hours. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but anyway, so, uh, uh, but, but they, they, have a, they, they don't understand the Trinity. They just don't understand that, well, how can you believe in a triune God? I said, well, because God declares He's a three-part being. He has three manifestations, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. God is a three-in-one God. Well, I don't understand that. I don't care whether you understand it or not. Believe it. Amen. Just believe it. See, we, we, we want to understand everything before we believe it. And then you rob yourself. Just believe. Believe before you understand. Then we're challenged to take God's word by faith with nothing added to it. Don't add anything to it. Don't take anything away. Just believe it completely. Purely to just believe what he has declared to us to be the truth. No matter what the circumstance or situation may look like. He simply says, speaks and says, the just shall live by faith. Amen. I want you to hear this this morning. Faith is not a movement. Are you part of that faith movement? It beats the doubt movement. I've had people actually call me, are you a faith church? I said, what's the option? Is there an option? There isn't. Yes, we preach fear, doubt, and unbelief. God will kill you just to show you that He loves you. Glory to God. Hope to see you Sunday. <laughs> Faith is not a movement. It is a lifestyle. Yes, the just shall live by faith. Amen. And when the, what they call the faith movement came out years ago is that the church had preached unbelief for so long that when faith started to be preached again and declared again boldly and openly and people were getting a, a hold of it, it challenged the doctrine of the church. And church says we either got to change or we got to admit we were wrong or we got to denounce faith. All right, moving right along. Look inside your outline. Turn with me to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 and 23. Jesus on his way going into Jerusalem. He comes by a tree. He wants to eat some figs. There's no figs on it, so he curses it. And it dries up from its root. The next day the disciples see it and say, Oh, look at that. The tree you talked to died. Let's get that. Jesus spoke to a tree and it did exactly what he said. He went to a tree expecting to find fruit, finding none. He said, cursed be you from this day forward. Let no man ever eat fruit from you again. The next day they come back and they're amazed because what he spoke to responded to what he said. What he spoke to did what he said. When he spoke to the storms, they did what he said. And Jesus said, the same works that I do. When he spoke to demons and he said, go, they did what he said. When he spoke to the sick and he said, rise up, they did what he said. And when faith goes off in our heart, we'll begin that we'll believe that we can speak and things will happen according to what we say. Are you with me? 
Now, the devil doesn't like that, but we're not much concerned about him. We're as concerned about him as we are the opinions on the view. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mark eleven twenty two. Jesus simply tells his disciples, have faith in God. See, too many today are trying to get what they already have, and that is faith. You don't need more faith. You need to use what you have. Jesus said if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed. Sean talked about it last week. If you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you would say to this tree, be plucked up by your root and cast into the sea, and it would obey you. Amen. Amen. So faith To be healed, we're trying to get faith to be healed, enough faith to be healed, faith to receive the provision and to see the promises of God come to pass in their lives. But remember this and never forget it. The devil wants you to believe what he knows is not true. I've said it before, I'm going to keep saying it. The devil is a liar. He's the father of lies. When, when you read something from the Bible and it's a word of God speaking to you and you hear a voice say, that isn't for the day. You can't have that. God won't do that in your life. That is not coming from God. That is the devil. He's a liar. He's a father of lies. There is no truth in him. You need to learn the word shut up and tell him to shut up. Amen. Amen. Think about it. You have faith, you have your answer in Christ. How many know 1 Peter 2.24 says, by His stripes we're not going to be healed. We are healed. Amen. And we were healed. The cross paid the price and we need to declare it in finished term. When we forget, what we forget is that we are saved. If we are saved, we have faith. It is the gift of God. We cannot be saved without faith. Ephesians 2.8 tells us we are saved by grace through faith. It is the gift of God. Romans 12 and verse 3 tells us that God gives to every man the measure of faith. Anything God requires of us, He supplies. Let me grab my water bottle to illustrate this. I want to help you this morning. Please... Get out of the mode of thinking by measure. I mean, the term measure is used, but, but, you know, with the same measure you give, it shall be measured back to you. But when it comes to God, this bottle declares that it can hold 16.9 fluid ounces of liquid. Okay? But what we think, we think that we're like a bottle, and we think of God like water, and we think because we're a limited size container that we can only have so much of God on the inside of us, that God somehow can only give us a little itty bitty portion of who He is. But Spirit does not have measure. Spirit does not have measure. And when God gives of Himself, He gives all of Himself. He can't just be part of Himself in one place. He can't just be a little of himself in one place. That's why John 1 verse 16 says, And of his fullness we have all received. So when you accept Christ as your Savior, when you're born of the Spirit, then you receive all of God in your life, not just a little bit of God. And you don't have to be afraid of using up God. Amen. You have all of God you will ever need in your life. And He's in there without measure. Could you shout amen? amen. See, you have the God kind. Uh, uh, what God, when God says have faith, He gives us the measure of faith that He asks us to use. He gives us His kind of faith. Anything that is a gift from God is of His kind. So if the Bible says that God has given you the measure of faith, He's given you something from Himself. Faith that comes from Himself. It is God's kind of faith. He's given you of Himself. Are you with me? He he doesn't have create some faith outside of Himself and gives it to you. He gives you His faith. Faith is like this. God's faith is like this. He believes when He speaks, worlds are created. He believes when he speaks, he's releasing a create, the, his creative force. And you're made in his image. When he gave man dominion and authority, he gave us that same power. And we have creative power. Do you know everything we have has been created first by words? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you don't Al Gore said he was going to create the internet. There you go. <laughs> you guys are slow this morning. Amen. So watch this. So you have, think about it. He cannot give something that he is not. 
See, you have the God kind of faith. So here's the challenge. Use it. Use it. Use what God has given to you. If you're not born again today, give your life to Christ. God's gift to you is forgiveness and restoration. And He offers you to walk with Him in this amazing life that He's prepared for you. We said, you can be that new creature recreated in Christ Jesus. So use it. Speak to your mountains. Declare the provision and promise of His Word over your life, your family, your purpose, and your destiny in Christ. Quit agreeing with the devil and start mixing the Word with your faith. It's so easy to be negative. Oh, yeah. Amen. We major in negative. Yeah. Amen. Think about that. Using the faith that God gives you, speak in agreement with His Word. Mix the Word with your faith. You can't even get saved without saying words. Right. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That, that, that if thou shalt believe in your heart and confess or speak with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord God raised him from And so for with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The heart believes unto right. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You get saved by saying words. Amen. Words create and open the door for the life of God to flow in you. So hear it again. It's imperative that we actively work to shrink everything but God. It's so easy to make everything big. Our circumstance gets so big and God seems to get so small. I just don't know how God's going to do it. And we go back to try to understanding instead of believing. We don't understand how He's going to do it. I could care less how He's going to do it. Amen. Amen. Look at, the, look, look at the woman. God commanded Elijah, go, go, go down to Zarephath. I've commanded a widow woman there to take care of you during the famine. And he shows up and the widow woman's got enough oil and enough bread to cook two little cakes. And they're going to eat it and die. And the man of God says, hey, bring me some first. And she does that. And the oil and the meal never run out for three years. It always was the same. It, it, didn't, it didn't explode. Into a warehouse full of oil and a warehouse full of meal. It just never ran out. How did he do that? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Have another cake. One second. Who cares? But see, we talk ourselves out of the victory because we want to know how instead of believing that he will. Are you doing all right? Believe in God. Believe in God. See, it's imperative that we keep God bigger than any other situation. Think about it. We constantly and consciously must make Him greater in our faith, in our prayer, in our walk, and especially over our fears. Why? Because God is greater. He is greater. Again, here, the devil wants you to believe what he knows is not true. That's his plan and strategy in every attack. He knows that you have faith as a gift from God or you could not be saved. He wants you to believe what he knows is not true. But don't buy the lie. Remember, saved people have faith. Come on. How many know you're born again? Raise your hand real high. Amen. Now just say this. I have faith from God. I have faith from God. Amen. God's given you his measure of faith. Say this. I have all the faith. I will ever need to overcome and win in every situation. God has given me His measure of faith in my life. He calls me to be an overcomer. And I overcome by faith. Amen. Glory to God. Think about it. 1 John 5, 4, look at what it says. For whatever is born of God. How many are born of God? Raise your hand again. Whatever, here it is in your Bible. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Wow. God is so good. Amen? Amen. But we must purpose to receive God's word as the word of faith. Romans 8 says this. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. To preach means to proclaim, to declare, to make known. 
So then faith, verse 17 says, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let me put it to you like that. Every one of you in this room has faith for all different kinds of aspects in your life and in different categories of your life. We, we have different faith in different areas for different things. But it's all based upon words. Your faith has come by hearing. Your faith has been based upon what you've heard. Yes. Amen. How many, know when you, how many know when you go to the doctor, he speaks words to you? Uh -huh. She speaks words to you. And then you put faith in those words. Well, the doctor said, well, whoop de doo God said. <laughs> yeah, but the doctor said, good. I'm sure it's a nice person. But God said, the doctor said, there's no hope. But God said, are you listening to me? I see, the trouble is, is you've been told you have to be polite. Let me ask you this. Is cancer polite? Is diabetes polite? Is any blood disease polite? No. Is hepatitis C polite? Is any disease you can think of polite? No, it's aggressive. But you, you, you want to beat it being nice. Amen. This is the kind of message you got Jesus run out of church. I'm feeling that same spirit right here today. <laughs> Amen. So watch this, watch this. See, God's word is called the word of faith. Faith is based on facts. The facts of God's word. Amen. You have to settle that in your heart. Hear me this morning. Unbelief is founded upon theories. Unbelief is founded upon theories. Definition of a theory. A theory is a supposition established upon ignorance of the subject under discussion. I have a theory about that. Oh, you're stupid. I understand completely. Amen. In other words, a theory is the lie we make up to support, defend, and define our ignorance or lack of faith. Amen. See, the reason many churches are filled with unbelief is because they have heard too much theory and not enough faith. The ministry or preaching has shifted off of the word of faith and is thriving on a psychology of unbelief. I'll give you one example. There are people all over in, in, in Christendom today who believe that God put sickness on His people to teach them things. Well, the Lord's just trying to teach me something. Well, then why are you going to the doctor to get rid of it? You should be saying, bring it on, Lord. I, I want to be the best Christian I can be. Could you give me something else? Amen. Could you add some boils to that? Amen. Could all my hair fall out? I won't say that. No, take that one. Come on, pour it on, Lord, pour it on. And we don't believe that. Oh, oh, so you're going to the doctor to get rid of what you believe God gave you, so you're fighting against God. You're operating against the will of God. We first started in the ministry, we had a men's breakfast, and the guy told me he believed that. He's trying to convince me of that. I said, oh, is that right? I said, do you have any kids? He said, yes, I have a son. I said, well, go home today and take your son out in the garage, grab a hammer, and smash four of his fingers. And say, son, you know, as a good father, you're going to have to experience pain in life. I just want to teach you how to deal with it so you'll be prepared later on. Because I love you. See, in our society, if somebody did that, we would arrest them for child abuse and incarcerate them and punish them. Yeah, but in the church, we preach that's our God. So we're declaring our Heavenly Father as a child abuser. And as fallen men, we have enough common sense that if somebody does that to their natural born children, that that is abuse and subject to penalty. But somehow it's spiritual to declare that to God because we've developed a theory that healing is not for today. Because we don't want to pay the price to walk in faith. We don't want to fight for the victory. So it's easier to come up with a religious theory that does away with the victory that comes by faith. Are you doing all right this morning? So think about it. 
See, church members can only be a byproduct of what they hear. This is why it's life and death to your soul where you go to church. I'm sorry, but not just any church is the right church just as long as you go. Because there are some churches that are telling you that God's out to kill you to show you He loves you. Seriously. Amen. It's like this. Listen, the Bible says the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Let, let me give you another. Let me, I'm going to bring this down home real close. I've had to do too many funerals prematurely for children. Amen. And it always bothers me when somebody rises up and says, Well, you know, the Lord took them because He needed a flower in heaven. I said, Are you stinking kidding me? God is going to reach down into a family that He loves and rip the very heart out of that family because He needs a flower in heaven? My name is Don. I'm your friend. <laughs> Amen. How many have ever heard that? Oh, you know, the Lord, He needed them. He, you know, He wanted to add to His choir in heaven. Are you kidding me? We're just making stuff up. Are we doing all right? Don't get mad at me for preaching real good. <laughs> See, the right church preaches the Word. Preaching the Word builds faith, not unbelief. But to preach the Word, you have to speak with authority. And Jesus spoke after the Sermon on the Mount, and it says they marveled because He taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes and the Pharisees. Jesus didn't preach like everybody else. He declared the authority of God to those who would hear Him. Are you with me this morning? Think about it. It's not enough to say we do. We must preach the Word without apology or compromise. It's the only source from which faith can come. The best way to really help anyone is to tell them what the Bible says. Give them what God's Word says, not what men have contrived in their minds. Man can be wrong, but God and His Word are never wrong. How many would agree? Now hear me this morning, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what has happened, God's Word has something to say about it. So what do you do? No matter what you're going through, take this formula right here. Find out what the Word of God says about it. Do you have a financial need? Do you have a family need? Do you have a physical need? Whatever it may be. Do you have opposition? Do you need favor? What is the situation? God's Word has something to say about it. And then once you find the Word, then faith will come. When you find out what the Word of God comes, faith comes to believe for the Word to be manifest through your life. And then what you do, you begin to speak and declare that faith come. And faith always has a voice. Faith always speaks. Jesus said, if you had faith in Luke 17, 6, if you had faith, you would say. Yes. So faith always speaks. And so then you begin to declare. But on the other side, you have to be specific. Mark chapter 10, Jesus passing through Jericho, blind Bartimaeus is crying out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That is a covenant cry. Jesus is the covenant redeemer. Bartimaeus has acknowledged him. You are the son of David. You are the Messiah. And as Messiah, that means I don't have to be blind anymore. Because the covenant redeemer comes to restore all things. And blindness is not part of the covenant. Are you with me? Yep. So he's crying out for mercy. Jesus stops in response to the covenant cry for mercy. But when Bartimaeus Maus gets there, he asks him, What do you want me to do for you? Very specific. Oh, just mercy, Lord. More mercy. Mercy. More. More. More what? Mercy is, is intangible. Jesus wouldn't let him just ask for mercy. He says, what do you want? I'll illustrate to you like this. All you guys can understand this. Ask your wife where she wants to eat. Anywhere is fine. I tease Sue about it all the time. 
Oh, all women. I don't care. You pick anywhere, fine. No. What do you want to eat? I'm like this. Any place that serves medium rare steak? Meat. I'm a carnivore. I have teeth. Amen. I chew. So, but, but, so you can get specific. You like this, like that. Well, just this. No. But, but see, some of you have women faith. I don't know if I can say that right. Because God's going, what do you want? I don't care. Whatever. Anywhere. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm way in trouble, but I don't care this morning. How many know what I'm saying? Come on, lady. If we're asking you, we're saying, we're preferring you. We love you. I want you. It's like I'm saying, I want to take you where you want to go. Let me be your chariot driver. Let me escort you in. Pull out the chair. Sit you down. Order your favorite meal. Where do you want to go? Anywhere's fine. Where do you want to go for lunch, honey? Nowhere with you, Bubba, I'm telling you right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch this. That. When I find what the Word says, when faith comes and I speak, things change. But if you're being general with God, you know what's going to change? Nothing. God says, tell me what you want. Faith is specific. Faith is direct. Though his word is the word of faith. Speak, be specific. What do I do? So worship team comes back. Make God bigger and everything else small. Mix the word with the faith he has given you. You have the God kind of faith. Cease from your works and enter into his rest. The rest of uh, Hebrews 4 says, those that have entered into rest have ceased from their work. You don't have to work to make it happen. You can speak and declare God's provision over your life. Words are so powerful when it comes to receiving from God. The nation of Israel, God brings them to the promised land. He says, choose you out 12 spies, send them into the land and let them bring back a report. Go and see if it isn't everything that I said it would be. They go into the land, they come back. 10 of those spies say, it's everything God said it would be. But we cannot go up and take it because there is adversity there. There are giants there. And we are grasshoppers in their sight. We'll never be able to overcome the opposition that is there. Joshua and Caleb stood up and said, Hey, shut up. We are well able to go up. God has said. God is on our side. We are well able to go up. But they refused to go in. And Joshua and Caleb, the Bible says, they were of a different spirit. They had a different spirit. They had a spirit of faith. And they were speaking in agreement with what God said. And God said to the nation of Israel, He said said to that generation, Okay, if that's what you want to say, this is who I am. I am the God who creates the fruit of your lips. I will do exactly what you said. You said I brought you out for your carcasses to die in the wilderness. Your carcasses will die in the... I will create the fruit of your lips. And that's why I said earlier, it is so important. Hear me, church. You think, Pastor, why are you so aggressive? Because the devil has been kicking your hiney for too long. Amen. It doesn't matter what the situation is. This is a fight. That's why God gave you armor. That's why Paul said to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. That's why Paul said to the church of Corinth, the weapons of our Warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down the stronghold and bringing into captivity every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. And when there's a thought over your sickness, well, there's no way that I'm just going to have to put up with this the rest of my life. You don't have to put up with anything the rest of your life. Everything is temporal and subject to change. The moment you believe God's word and faith arises in your heart, you begin to speak and declare, and you say, I will settle for nothing less. Amen. 
Come on, if you're going to go out, it's like anything else in fighting and in warfare. Go out engaged in the battle, not being overrun by the enemy. Are you listening to me? So important. Look at this last point as we close this morning. Begin to call those things that do not exist as though they did. Speak to your body and your health. Call yourself healed. Say it with me. Say it out loud. I am the healed of the Lord. Say it again. I am the healed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Think about it. Speak to your finances. Declare His provision over your life. Speak to your loved ones. Call them saved, healed, and delivered. Speak to the storms and mountain in your life. Expect them to respond to the voice of your faith in God. And then lastly, speak to the tombs. Hear this this morning. Where your hopes and dreams have been wrapped in the grave clothes of unbelief. And call them forth and back to life in Jesus name. You need to hear that. Some of you have allowed your hope and your dream and your vision and your plan to be wrapped in unbelief. And the devil has told you that will never come to pass. And you voluntarily allowed them to be buried in a tomb of unbelief. You need to rise up like the Lord Jesus. And you need to say, hey... Lazarus, come forth in Jesus' name. Hopes and dreams, come forth in Jesus' name. I refuse to have my heart bound by unbelief. I'm rolling back the stone today. I'm believing God for the breakthrough. Come on, if you believe God's on your side, stand to your feet. Give Him a praise in the house of God this morning. Come on. I've given you, I get, I'm sorry. A couple of weeks ago, it's, it, this has been going off in me for the last few weeks. Even when I shared a few weeks ago, and I told you a story about me being at the gas station, that guy berating that woman. I just can't take it. I get mad when I see God's people. We've been given the Word of God. If you're here today, say almost every one of you raise your hand. I know I'm saved. Then you're saved. God lives on the inside of you. Colossians 1, 27. Christ in you. The hope of glory. His Word has been given to you. He's given you the voice to speak. And He's given you the measure of faith. You can speak and declare over your situation. I'm asking you right now. If you have something you've been fighting against, battling against, standing against, believing God for a victory. If anything's been wrapped in unbelief and put in the tomb, then get up here right now this morning. We're declaring something in Jesus' name. Come on. This is a year of intentional transformation. I am intentionally, I am intentionally, come on, living by faith. I'm not taking it anymore. I'm not, I'm going to be engaged in the fight. I'm not going to let the devil run over me. I'm not going to let the enemy attack and do nothing about it. In Jesus name.